Hi, Taylor T. Carlson, and I'm back with another video for you. Continuing to move on down the path of rock and roll today, and I'm going to be showing off my collection from one of my favorite companies that releases CDs, Rock Candy Records. This is a UK-based company, and they put out a lot of reissues of old hard rock, heavy metal, AOR type stuff. It's a pretty diverse catalog, and they really dig pretty deep into the vault with some of the stuff that they put out, and I've really been impressed. I've been collecting their stuff for several years now. I mean, sometimes you get things like bonus tracks, and even if it's a fairly bare-bones reissue, they'll usually have a lot of expanded content. So, I've got a stack of my releases here. I'm just going to show some of these off, and just for uh, demonstrative purposes, I'll start off with the uh, Ace Freely Trouble Walkin'. This was Ace's first solo album after the uh, Freely's Comet Band disbanded, although ended up being a lot of the same band members anyway. See, on the back here, you got the track list. There's usually a little essay about the band and the album. And then here's the actual CD itself. Under there, they've got an ad for the uh, second sighting issue, which was the second Freely's Comet album. And then there's always a booklet, like right here, you got the track list, list of the players, and all the other pertinent personnel. But then you look at these inside the booklets and you got plenty of uh, interesting information, new essays from famed rock journalists and things like that. I'm not gonna go through every single booklet of every single CD, I'm just kind of showing off my collection for today. But you can see here, they definitely go the extra mile with bringing you interesting content as a part of this all. And right there, that's the last page of the booklet. And luckily, they've managed to put out a lot of great stuff the last few years. Their stuff used to be all imports, but they started doing a few American releases in recent years as well. So, anyway, I'm going to go on down the list and show off some more of the other ones I've got. This is uh, White Lion, Fight to Survive. The first album from these guys before they really became you know, AOR, hairband, superstars. This album's a little darker and a little heavier. This is by far my favorite record in their catalog, and it's one you definitely want to go back and listen to, especially if you only know them for, like, the pop hits and so forth. This is a Lou Graham, Long Hard Look, the original singer from Foreigner. He put out his share of solo albums. He also had a band with Vivian Campbell called Shadow King that was really good as well, but... Fantastic solo album here. This was released, I believe, while he was still with Foreigner in the latter years of the 1980s. And what else we got here? Angel City. This is a great group out of Australia from the late 70s. Very punk style, hard rock. They're almost like a cross between ACDC and the Ramones. They were actually known as the Angels here in, the Uni in their native Australia, but in the United States they call them Angel City to avoid confusion with other groups, presumably. And Salty Dog, this is a fantastic hard rock group from the late 80s, early 90s. They really had potential to be one of the next big superstar groups, but unfortunately, changing music trends and everything meant that was never meant to be. Pete Ravine, the guitar player from this band, actually lives here in Vegas. I do see him pop up at shows sporadically from time to time. And an interesting piece of trivia, his father, Peter Ravine, was actually the manager of professional magician Lance Burton for many years. Ravine's father himself was actually a magician as well back in the day. Buck Dharma, flat out, the guitarist and co-lead vocalist from Blue Oyster Cult. A lot of people don't know he actually did a solo album. And it's actually a little more pop and commercial than the BOC stuff. It's said that the BOC song Burning For You was actually recorded, or not recorded, but written for his solo album, although the BOC guys persuaded him to do it with them, and of course the rest is history. It became one of the biggest hits they ever had. And right here, Fast Way. This is a group that was put together by Fast Eddie Clark from Motorhead, who we unfortunately just lost a little while ago, and features Dave King on vocals, nowadays the singer of the band Flogging Molly. This is like a cross between... Led Zeppelin and Motley Crue. Great classic hard rock. They're probably best known for doing the soundtrack to the 1986 film Trick or Treat, and their title song from that was a minor hit. Dirty Looks. Great European group from the late 80s. Very raunchy, dirty, 
classic raw hard rock. Sadly, we lost their vocalist Henrik Ostergaard a few years ago, but these guys, I do occasionally hear them pop up on Hair Nation on satellite radio from time to time. Yeah, Vandenberg. Headed for a Storm. This was the second album from Vandenberg. Adrian Vandenberg, later known for playing with White Snake, And he's actually since done a revival of the band Vandenberg. They just put out an album this year. I'd love to check that out if I get a chance. And definitely great to see Adrian still doing his thing. It's actually his guitar solo you hear on White Snake's Here I Go Again. He was a guest guitarist, but later joined the band full time. Zebra, great classic mix of, you know, pop, hard rock, AOR. These guys, fantastic group that never really gets the proper credit. I believe their first album really is the best. Produced by Jack Douglas, phenomenal rock and roll producer. He's probably best known for his work that he did with Aerosmith in the 70s and the early 80s. And the photos in this are actually supplied by a guy named David Plastic. David Plastic lives here in town, phenomenal photographer. I actually did some encyclopedias of rock bands a few years ago and actually paid him to use his photos. He's one of the best in the business, and if you ever get a chance, go look him up because he's got some phenomenal photographs that are worth seeing. Riot, excellent classic hard rock group out of the New York City area back in the late 70s through the early 80s. These guys have sort of always been around. Not to be confused with Quiet Riot, a very different group. This was their third album. File. If, I, if I could learn how to talk, that would be nice. Fire Down Under, and it was the final album to feature vocalist Guy Speranza, who sadly passed away several years ago. This band, unfortunately, no strangers to tragedy. The guy that replaced him on vocals was actually killed in a carjacking. And then... Mark Reale, the founding guitarist, died of Crohn's disease a few years ago, and I'm pretty sure that's not where the tragedy's in, but phenomenal hard rock, and I especially like this one because it's got several bonus tracks as well. Dokken, Back for the Attack. If you know me, you know I love, like, 80s hair and glam bands and a lot of this classic hard rock, and Dokken was one of my favorite bands back in the day. I've seen Don Dokken perform a few times in recent years. Sadly, the guy really can't sing anymore, which is a shame because he had one of the best voices in the business back then. Of all of Dokken's albums, this is my absolute favorite. Uh, Prisoner and Night by Night are probably my two favorite Dokken songs, both on this record. Although most people probably know this one for the song Dream Warriors, which of course was in the Nightmare on Elm Street film series. Another Dokken release, this is Beast from the East. This was the live album that followed up back for the attack. They, of course, toured Japan. Big superstars over there. A lot of American rock was really, really popular in Japan back in the day. Early CD releases of this were a bit of a disaster because they chopped up the track list just to fit everything on one CD, but this has the full two-disc running order. The... Uh, Co-producer on here is a guy named Angelo Arcuri. He actually lives here in Vegas as well. He was the sound guy over at the Vinyl Club inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, which has since been closed down, and it's being converted into a Virgin Hotel and Casino. And last thing I got in the stack here, Crocus, Metal Rendezvous, one of their early albums, and these guys out of Switzerland. Fantastic classic group. This one's got... Uh, Heat Strokes and Bedside Radio, which were minor hits and definitely preludes to the successes that have a few years later. Headhunter and The Blitz were probably their most famous albums, which came out a few years later. And it's great to see that this one got the rock candy treatment. Now, I'll probably do two more videos covering the rest of my collection. All the other rock candy CDs that I've bought, I've actually since got autographed. So... I'll show off a few of those as well. Have you had a chance to pick up anything from the Rock Candy Records catalog? Let me know down in the comments section below and what you think of the releases and which one you've picked up. Also remember to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like if you found it helpful. I'm Taylor T. Carlson and I will see you in my next video.